dying times here. So situated near the tip of Africa is where we're from, South Africa. Um, it's probably closer to Antarctica than it is the US, the UK or Europe. Uh, add to that uh, various levels of sanctions in the 60s and 70s, hardcore sanction in the 80s, which lasted 10 years, plus the conservative government. The birth of the alternative culture was more a trickle born out of rebellion a few years after the initial onslaught in the north. Despite political and social unrest and an economy that's never actually recovered, the advent of the internet brought an accessibility to the scene, which helped it grow. So we often get asked what the scene is like, and we've gone to the trenches to get the lowdown. And on screen, we've got Patrick Davidson, guitarist for Mind Assault, founder and creator for Metal for Africa. We've got John Morrow, from guitarist from Agro, and an independent reviewer. We've got Regan Dupasson, vocalist for Facing the Gallows, and Carlos Sanchez, vocalist for Deadline. And a wild Lou Dupasson, he appears from The Drift, Nave, sorry, Knave, and MK Ondergrond. So has the alternative community changed over the years? And was it kind of a gradual change or just did you just wake up one day and go, where the fuck am I? <laughs> and what happened? <laughs> um, yeah, no, obviously it changed. I mean, everything's going to change in that kind of situation. Uh, when when it was the 80s and there was only a handful of people, especially in Joburg where I grew up, I mean, fuck, you could have counted us on a couple of hands. It, it was maybe at most 50, 75 people, like at 1987, 1988. Um, by the time we hit the 90s, there seemed to be a lot more people around. There were a lot more venues and the scenes had started merging so all the goths and the punks and the skins and the metal guys and anybody that was alternative kind of huddled in one place until that place got raided and locked down and then another place opened up down the road with the same owners and it was like a kind, kind of uh wild west kind of fun way to do it but the scene was always kind of small and then uh with the whole grunge thing and metal kind of getting a little fady and stuff Things got a little slim in the mid 90s and then the late 90s it started picking up again and then you started getting shadows fall and lamb and all those guys coming out in the early 2000s and all of a sudden fucking it just exploded again and all of a sudden there were a few more venues there were all of a sudden a lot more bands and a lot more bands playing metal instead of new metal or whatever the hell the hell they were playing before that and it was really good for a while and then by the time I joined Agro, which was, I don't know, 2011 or something like that, the scene was kind of stagnant again. Um, the shows, fuck, man. We played shows to like three, four, five people. Uh, it was it was grim. It was really, really shit. And then we went over to Wacken to play Wacken, and that was like, <laughs> fucking hell, what the hell are we doing in South Africa? But then, you know, you come back and you play a big show at the doors or something like that. And it's like, holy shit, this is actually quite cool. But it's not consistent. And it, it just it felt very, you need to really cling on and try and keep the people there. And as much as you try, I don't know, the scene has always been kind of fickle, at least definitely in the past 20, 30 years. So to try and keep those people coming to your shows and get new people coming to your shows is a very difficult vibe. So the the continuity between scenes, there's always been a few people, the kind of strain of people that went through it, but it's it's changed up and over so many times since I've been around there. So yeah, I, I came in when the likes of like Pestra and them were fa phasing out. So I think uh, I, I missed I missed the big part, but then I still got to see a, a reasonable size of the scene, and then bands just started dropping like fucking flies and high school shows weren't happening anymore. No bands were coming out of high schools anymore. It was here and there. We were just hearing about shit. And then you had to rely on some of the old dogs that had been around um, for so much longer. And like I said, the bands just kept dropping and dropping like flies. Um, getting to watch Gallows play for so many years is pretty cool because I think they, they are some of the few 
OGs from then and uh, of the core age that are still um, just doing something. So I think there was a there was a massive change. Even today, um, like we're talking about, like your old guys following you, your old fans following you the whole time. We've seen it statistically. Um, the I think the most common age listening to to Gallows is between fucking thirty and forty. It's here and there where we've got the odd twenties um, because I just don't see too many younger dudes coming out to shows anymore. All the dudes I know that I played in bands with that were around my age or younger have disappeared. And um, I'm sure they still listen to music, but I, have, I haven't seen them at shows in, in years. So yeah, I think it's, it's changed quite a bit this side.